So today we are going to discuss, hopefully it will be helpful for you, this book which is titled Living Wisely, Living Well. Uh, I don't know if you already know, but Swami Kriyananda wrote around 180 books and this is one of those books. Uh, in fact, it was, it was one of his latest, mm -hmm. I think, towards the end, towards towards the end of his life. And I was there when he was working on this book. And surprisingly, after he finished writing the book, he edited, I mean, he <laughs> went through it 15 times just to make sure that every word here was well understood and was re um, relatable for each one of us in our daily lives. When he finished the final edition, he, he wrote an email to several of us uh, saying that this could actually become a bestseller. And he was overjoyed with the thought of how much uh, this could help uh, all of us in our daily lives. So um, we thought might as well to start. In fact, it has a thought, a concept, a tip, a practice that we can implement every day of our lives. In fact, it has 365 uh, quo uh, yeah, little themes, little things, <laughs> little things for each one of the days. So it's, it's really, really nice. And some of us are reading after uh, every morning meditation. So it's very inspiring to start your day with a direction, with some purpose, and with a reminder of mm, maybe today I can mm, focus and think more about uh, certain things. So why don't you start maybe with the okay. first? Thank you very much. You are welcome. All right. We're such a polite couple. Thank you. Take the book yeah, from. Yeah. <laughs> I hope this is not just for the camera. <clears throat> okay, we thought we'll talk about March 25 as well. Now we're trying to cover this week generally just to have a feeling because we only get to do this once a week. So Swamiji writes March 25th. Try to understand points of view that are different from your own. The mind, like the body, must be stretched now and then to keep it limber, lest it ossify. You can see when Swamiji <laughs> went 15 times to edit this, he was just trying to make it tighter and every word that he uses is just right. It's like it just gives you, it invokes the visual, the image, the emotion, the feeling of what he wants to say. In fact, I remember Narayani telling me that when Swami finished the book completely, he said this is probably the only book that now he thinks is done. It's like, you know, that he does cannot edit it any further. Often he would say he does not read his books because the editor in him will immediately come out and he'll <laughs> immediately start while he's reading, start making, you know, little corrections, little ways that he was always thinking about how can I present my point? And this relates a little bit to here. How can I present my point of view to others in a way that they won't reject it outright, that they would at least feel open? Sometimes what happens with us is, you know, this is my point of view, take it or leave it. And uh, now that all of us are, <laughs> all of us are together, kind of trapped uh, in each of our little homes. We have some people, in Narayani and I are just two of us, but where there are two, there are two points of view. There are two opinions. If you are four, you're going to have four points of view. If you are more, well, <laughs> I hope you're having a lot of fun receiving and opening yourself to other people's points of view. And this is uh, after a very long time, uh, all of us are having to really be with one another 24 hours. You know, I mean, sometimes we do this when we go on a vacation, but even there, there's like so much to distract us. 
Now there is nothing to distract us. I mean, you can watch your television, you can do your little work, but there you are. It's a little bit of an oven, and all of us are cooking together in the oven. Narayani and I, our lives are 24 hours together, no matter what we are doing. Only on Mondays, uh, we've made a little bit of a, uh, you can Conscious. say, sacred <laughs> decision. On Mondays, we've got two bedrooms. She goes, you know, normally on Sunday night after we come back from the center, we've finished our satsang, we've finished the day, we've given as much as we can. And then she goes to her bedroom, one of it, I go to mine. And Sunday night to Tuesday morning, we just stay in our respective rooms, just being quiet, being still. And we're still doing that now, even during this lockdown period. But otherwise, we're always together. And uh, especially now, this is the Navratra period. And uh, Navratra is the Divine Mother energy. And this is one of the motherly, feminine aspects. Women, I feel, not being uh, particularly gender-related, but those who have more feminine qualities are more open to other people's points of view, primarily because of that motherly instinct. When you're a mother, you have to be open to your child thinking about the world very differently. You are not going to tell your child, no, this is how gravity works and you know, this is how life is and karma is going to come back to you. No, you let the child just imagine whatever he wants or she wants, express whatever they want. Mommy, look, this thing is flying because, and they'll just come up with a very absurd reason. And you are just going to be like, Shabash, bete, very good, very right, bilkul, sahi hai. And uh, we don't fight them on that. So it's a very motherly, very feminine quality, very much a divine mother, Navratra energy. And it's appropriate in that sense that now, especially, we look at where we are. All of us are now in spaces where we have to really work with one another. There's not much room. We can't just say, I'm going to work. No children are not going to school. All of us are together and all of us as individuals rightfully express God uniquely. And that uniqueness of expression is often quite different. And especially in a family, it can be quite different too. And so take this opportunity now to see how can I open myself more to other people's points of view. And I like the second line especially here where Swami says, the mind like the body. Now, he's not only talking about it'll be nice if you listen to other points of view. It'll be so much more harmonious if you listen to other points of view. All true. But the specific point Swamiji is making here is the mind like the body needs to be stretched every now and then lest it ossify. Ossify is what our bones do when we get arthritis. The joints get cranky, they don't want to move, there's no fluidity in the joint, there's pain, it hurts every time I get up. And so if the mind ossifies, it shuts itself essentially to God in so many forms. It shuts itself to even receive grace. Because grace, mind you, is not following your point of view. It has its own point of view. And when you open yourself to other people's point of view, you are more open to the point of view of God. You're more open to the point of view of grace. And if the mind ossifies, if the mind gets solid, if the mind solidifies, it closes itself, it gets very, very hard for us to experience deeper states of joy, bliss and expansion. A child's mind is so limber, so open. The child is like, you give it any reason, the child's like, such? Mama, when my, my dad was always a big joker, and uh, anything he said, me and my brother, we could never know, even now, if it's true, because he just make random th stuff up. So every time my dad told us something, we had to always go to our mom and say, Ma, Papa is saying this, is it true? But in the early days, we just accepted anything our father told us because our mind was so open, it was so limber, it was just willing to receive whatever and then allow whatever it received 
through our own experience to manifest. But as we grow older, the mind ossifies, ossifies. You see older people, it gets harder for them to open up. It's harder for them to change their points of view. It's harder for them to learn new things. So we have to open ourselves to this opportunity that we have now, especially. Here we are. There's no escaping it. Let's see if we can figure it out. Wow, so many points of view. Wow, God has so many opinions. Wonderful. I know Narayani is waiting to say something. No, no, I was hearing to. <laughs> but now I want to hear what you have to okay. say. Okay. Uh, you know, if she doesn't speak into this, then you won't hear her. Only I will hear her. By the way, we have been offered to um, be gifted, no, with another mic. Yeah. So, <laughs> because they see each other like passing the mic, Fighting. and si someone wrote us the other day, can I just gift? I mean, as, as a gift, give you a mic. Yeah, sure. So hopefully soon that will come. I'm just going to add very briefly, uh, it's so important to impersonalize uh, the information because we have a tendency to associate the information and the point of view that comes towards us with that specific face and with that specific person, whether it all oh, my mother is always saying that or my husband always so. So we have this tendency to not be um, impersonal to the information, but rather to see what is this person telling me. So we start reacting to not the information, but to the person. So I think it's going to be, it will be very important. That's something I'm working on myself very much to become in with whom <laughs> with you <laughs> to become very impersonal and just detach not only myself when i receive an information but detach the personality from where that information is flowing through i remember swamiji once scolding a person she was right her point of view was right but she was taking it so personally. She was so offended and she was so emotionally into what she had to say. And Swamiji corrected that right away because he could see that there was so much emotion and opinion into what she was saying and how she was judging that information. So I think it will be, this will be a good thing for us just to detach the information that is flowing uh, through the person that is sharing the message with you. A very good point, Narayani. I'm working on that too. <laughs> but not with Narayani. <laughs> My wife is perfect. Okay, let's see what is for today, March 26. Mm -hmm. So this is more specific, so this might be a message for some of us, let's see. Uh, even though it may not seem that way in the beginning. Okay, let's see. Swamiji says, when bargaining, seek benefits that are mutual. If you express yourself generously, the other person will usually, of his own accord, meet you halfway. Okay, now it doesn't seem off the bat that this is particularly you know it's like i'm not going that much anymore to the sabzi wala i'm not going to any shop and i'm not bargaining for anything now i'm mostly home but the truth is we're always bargaining our conversations our expectations of others are everything is a bargain on some level or the other everything is a compromise everything is a Listen, you give me this, I'll give you this. It's a give and take and not in a greedy, selfish sort of way. Just how the world works. The universe is one big bargain, you can say. Ye uthega, ye niche jayega. Ye uthega, ye niche jayega. Balance is being created through this exchange, through this bargain. And Swami says, when bargaining, seek benefits that are mutual. Now, our tendency, when I think of bargaining, and um, again, I have to remember my own childhood, my mom at shops, bargaining, haggling with the, with the sabziwala, me and my brother. 
so embarrassed. <laughs> like, oh no, ma, for that two rupees. But, you know, I never realized how, how my mother had to really put herself out there, the energy that she had to put out, because the world is also on one level always trying to take from us. And it's important that we know what is what everything is worth, what is the value of things in this world. In fact, there's a fun little story of Yogananda's. He goes to a store once and uh, he starts, you know, he picks up a few things and he's bargaining with the store owner and he brings the price down a lot through his bar. Yeah. Yogananda was this powerful man in America, I imagine. Now, this is America. He's got an American behind in the 1930s, this brown-skinned Indian man with long hair, orange robes. Must have been a sight. And Yogananda is just, you know, he's holding his ground. He's bargaining with that man and he gets the price down. But then when he gets the price down to the number he wanted, he then goes and gives him even more than the man had originally asked for. Now a disciple was there with him and when they finished, they get into the car. The disciple asks his guru, you know, why did you bargain only to give him more? So Yogananda said an interesting thing. He said, I bargained because A, I knew the true value of the products I was buying. B, this was not my money. I own nothing. This money is given to me by my organization. Now, of course, Yogananda was the one who attracted all the money. But as a renunciate, he never kept anything for himself. He would immediately, he had willed everything over to his organization. So he says, this money is my organization, so I have to be responsible for it. And so then the disciples are a little confused. He's like, okay, so you bargained so hard. You got the price down to what you wanted, but then you go ahead and give him so much more. He's, so Yogananda said, after I have done my duty and fulfilled my responsibility, then I could decide to be generous. Isn't that so beautiful? After I have done what I need to, then I can decide to be generous. And now today, again, we're trying to make some of these things more relatable to the place we find ourselves because it's a very unusual moment in history where we are. And so in our house now, um, Narayani and I are by ourselves. Normally in India, we are so fortunate in so many ways. We have a cook, we have a maid. I mean, we don't even think about these things in the West. And Narayani and I, Narayani of course grew up in Spain, but we spent a year in Spain. And it was just okay, everything ourselves. It was a new experience for me of course i grew up with a lot of help in the house but now many of us most of us have no help in the house and we're all doing a lot of our own chores uh, we've been cooking together today narayani was cleaning and vacuuming the house while i so this is the bargain <laughs> i'll vacuum the house shurjo you go to food hall and you buy the supplies by the way food hall is running out of food in case <laughs> that's something you need to do and uh, now is the time to look what is how can i get people to fulfill their responsibilities because it's important and i'm also here talking to the feminine energy more again keeping also this period this festivity in mind women are so much more open to doing it's amazing us as men who are a little more tight this is my role i only do this much um so you're going to have to invite the masculine energy in your family to do a little bit more. But keep this thought in mind. You know, create a nice mutual expression and make them realize there's value here. Don't make them feel that you're getting them to do something, but share with them. When Narayani's like, you chop the onions, I'm going to do this. And it's, it's fun. And us men, the masculine energy, we're more reasoning oriented. Okay, I'll chop the onions as long as Narayani is also doing something. So we need that, unfortunately, or fortunately, you can control us better if you can give us something, a good reason. So use this idea of bargaining because every act, every conversation today in some fashion or the other is an exchange, is a give and take. So try to make it really mutually beneficial and then be a little more generous than you can. And I will only add that especially not only in doing things, in sharing actions, but especially when you talk 
to people, when you are just having a simple conversation, make sure that you give that person the same amount of time that he's giving to you in terms how much is he listening to your story. Make sure that when your his turn comes, you are giving him the right amount of time to listening to his story. And every conversation, you make sure that you add, if that person says something uplifting, make sure that your response is also uplifting. So not only in actions, but be more aware in simple conversation. Make sure that whatever you have said, the other person feels like, you know, thank you. No, no one leaves the conversation feeling like, I had not enough time to share or to express myself or to offer something. And I think that's important for us right now to keep in mind, especially some of you who are right now with your families, in-laws and children. Give your children also the time. I mean, they are bringing so much joy and energy and willpower into your life. So make sure that you also give them that time, that joy and that energy into whatever you do with them and with your family and friends. I've been speaking so much. <laughs> I mean, I feel that then now it's your turn to speak mm. more. You want to do the last one? Yeah, no, why don't you do it? Okay, this time we'll speak less. Okay, let's see if we can already start practicing some of the things we're saying. Things. You Okay, now Narayani's taken the I'm opportunity. I'm letting him speak right now because then when this is over, he will need to hear me for a long time <laughs> and share with him everything. <laughs> I told you that the art of bargaining is better learned from the feminine energy. So now I'm also learning something simultaneously. Okay, let's see what the last point is. I have not read it before. Oops, where are you? Narayani, you just help me with that. Thank you. Huh. March 27th. So we've got our message for today, which you can practice every day, of course. And let's see what the message for tomorrow is. So we've just done past, present and future. Never impose an idea on anyone. Offer it kindly as a suggestion for his consideration. You'll find him readier then to accept it. This is wonderful. This is all, this whole week you can see the theme is, is a lot about working with people and uh, you know how the universe conspires to give us the right messages because this is it. Right now, our life is boiled down to working with people and not just any people, not people we can ignore, not people we work with and therefore, you know, just I can treat them however I want. No, these are people that we love deeply and we have the most karma with. These are people that we are most connected to and who have a very vital role to play in our lives, in our evolution and in our freedom. So while we are in this process, let's, you know, these two points that we spoke together, if we put them together, we kind of get into this next one, not imposing an idea on anyone. And I want to give it a little spin, especially for those of us who consider ourselves spiritual or are spiritually minded. Um, sometimes, you know, we feel that we have access to information that's a little bit more divine, you know, call it intuition, call it guidance. And this is an interesting point for us to remember that just because we feel that some idea has come to us, an intuition has come to us, a guidance has come to us, that we never kind of on the basis of that ever impose that guidance or intuition on others. In fact, Swamiji says as much and he says, never claim to have access to information that the other person doesn't. And this is how Swamiji lived his life. He did nothing that was not intuitive. He did nothing that he did not feel his guru was asking him to do or blessing him in doing or supporting the thought that he had. Yet he would never come out and say, I felt this. I was meditating and I felt this and now we must do this. I was a disciple of Yogananda. I know exactly what he wants. He would always say, 
you know, what do you think about this? Should we try this? How about we try that? And very casually, it's almost like you could have even missed it in conversation. Because in fact, one of the ways Swamiji said that he tested his intuition, tested his ideas, was by throwing it out at people and seeing the energy he received. Because often Swami said, even if a thought, an idea or an intuition is true, what also is important is if it will benefit the other people. Whether the timing of that intuition is true or not. And that he would only know when he would offer it as a suggestion to others and see what they would respond to him in return. And that sensitively, in that way, Swamiji continued to grow Ananda and respected each of us to be able to access the same intuition, the same ideas that he did and not just blindly follow him because he was the disciple of a great man, because he himself was a saint and because he was our teacher. And so each of us now are in little ways teachers to our children, to others who perhaps are looking for solutions, looking for higher states of awareness. So don't impose your own thoughts, your own ideas, your own spiritual practices, no matter how beneficial you think it is to them. Let's not impose it, but offer it very joyfully, lightly, as a suggestion. Perhaps this could be helpful if you are like me, that usually always come up with ideas and I want to materialize all these ideas and all these projects. One thing that has been very helpful for me and I have seen in Swamiji, how to propose that idea or that thought or that project. And if you want to experiment this week with the people around you, always propose it or share it as a question mark. For example, what do you think about this? Would you like to do this? Or would you like to do it in this way? What do you think? Do you think this will be appropriate? Or do you like to do this? And I think that gives also a little bit of room for humility mm -hmm. and make sure that it's not something that you are just channeling. And because you are channeling from the universe, it came to you from the point between the eyebrows and now has to be materialized no I mean ideas are you know universal and they are there accessible to everyone and sometimes the idea is right the intuition is right but the time is not right so even though you may have the right intuition the right guidance the right project that needs to happen doesn't mean it needs to happen right away. So it's, it's a very sensitive, fine line always for all of us. But I think you could experiment with this whenever you have an idea or project that you also want to do at home throughout this week or you want to involve involve more than one person, just presently present, present it uh, as a question mark and see what kind of energy and response comes to you and then from there, you can move forward. I've been learning a lot about Narayani and how she works with me through this. So thank you very much for bringing that out of her. Now I know every time she asks me a question, I'll be like, "Acha." <laughs> anyway, I think that's good enough for now with the book. You can share if they are interested. In By the way, you can share <laughs> if they're interested. Yeah, just to say, if you are interested, I'm sure you can find this book in any of our uh, sites. Or I think Ananda, Amazon or, or Amazon, Ananda Publications has it. It's a very easy book to read and very enjoyable. So anyway. You can uh, essentially set your life to just saying, okay, today I'm going to manifest and uh, try to express one of these things. Well, okay, enough from us. You guys have a fabulous evening, fabulous morning. We love you and take care.